Okay, uh, so we've now looked at uh, the metrical structure of uh, Euclidean spaces. So we've looked at the real line, we've looked at R2, and then we've looked at R3 and Rn. And uh, those are all, uh, you know, those are the foundations of Euclidean geometry. Uh, but um, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some slightly more abstract metric spaces. I mean, we're not in the realm of abstract nonsense yet, but we're going slightly more abstract, and we're going to look at the concept of unitary space. Unitary space. And unitary spaces are pretty much very, very similar concepts to these Euclidean spaces, but instead of using real numbers, we use complex numbers. So firstly, uh, let's look at uh, the metric, let's look at a metric space or structure on the complex numbers. So metric space structure on C. On C. Okay, uh, so uh, we take as our abstract set, we take the set of all complex numbers, which is the set A plus BI, where A and B are elements of the real numbers. And at the moment, I don't care about the beautiful algebraic properties of the complex numbers. All I care about here is that it is a set. Now, I can define the concept of a distance between two complex numbers, let's say A and B, so A and B are both elements of, oh no, silly me, I've used A and B up there. No, we'll take two other complex numbers, D of V and W. So V is a complex number, V1 plus V2I, and W is a complex number, uh, which is, uh, well, it's equal to uh, W1 plus W2I. Okay, uh, so um, if we wanted to take the distance between V and W, uh, then the way that we're going to define the distance is we're going to define it as the modulus, uh, the complex number mo uh, modulus. Every complex number has a modulus, which is given by, uh, so if we remind ourselves of the complex plane, here's the complex plane. Uh, the modulus of a complex number a plus bi is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, so that's the uh, modulus of a complex number, so this is the complex plane here. Uh, so basically, it, we're going to define the distance to be the modulus of v minus w. Okay, uh, so uh, that's well defined. That ascribes uh, to every pair you can pick a, a real number, a positive real number. So let's just see why this is a metric space. And it turns out that this, as far as the metrical structure is concerned, is uh, metrically isomorphic to the Euclidean plane uh, with its metrical structure that we've already discussed on it. And uh, I hope that that's pretty obvious why, because if you have two complex numbers, V and W, uh, then uh, the modulus of V minus W is the modulus of the complex number connecting the two, and uh, that's and the modulus of a complex number is actually just analogous to the length of the, well, the length of the uh, vector representing it. Uh, so it's going to give you the same length. This actually, this that metric is actually going to give you, uh, if you uh, uh, ascribe every point of the plane uh, a um, complex number as opposed to an ordered pair of real numbers, uh, and we put this metric on the complex numbers, it will give you the same metrical structure as um, as the uh, as the Euclidean plane, which we've already discussed. Okay, uh, so. Um, this is a metric space because, let's see that it obeys the first axiom, so we want to check that D of VW uh, is an element of uh, zero, well, including zero, uh, to plus infinity. Okay, uh, so, uh, the modulus of a complex number is always a non-negative real number, so tick that off straight away. Uh, and whatever V minus W is, it is most certainly a complex number. So, uh, second property, uh, is that the distance between uh, v and v is, should be equal to zero. Uh, well, if we take the distance between v and v, it's going to be the modulus of v minus v. v minus v is going to be the complex number zero. The modulus of the complex number zero is equal to zero. Conversely, if the distance between v and w is equal to zero, uh, then that implies the modulus of w minus v is equal to zero. There is only one complex number with the modulus equal to zero, and that is zero. So v minus w must be equal to zero, which implies that v is equal to w. Okay, so conversely, if, uh, the, mo if the distance between two complex numbers is under this metric is uh, equal to zero, it implies that the two complex numbers are in fact the same complex number. Okay, and third property is that uh, the distance between uh, the distance between um, x, uh, well, v and w, uh, which is equal to the modulus of v minus w, 
is in fact equal to w minus v, the modulus of w minus v, which is equal to the distance between w and v. So that's just because um, v minus v, uh, w minus v is the negative of v minus w, but when you take the modulus of it, that doesn't that doesn't affect it. All it does, uh, if we're looking at this picture over here, is if we have a complex number going up here and we take the negative of it, it sends it off in the opposite direction, but the modulus of that complex number is still the same. And the fourth property, again, I'm going to wave my hands at this. Uh, we will prove it symbolically later on when we do the Minkowski inequality. Uh, but at the moment, what I'm saying is that the distance between V and W is, in fact, if you take any two complex numbers, V and W, the distance between them under this, under this formula up here is, in fact, equal to... Um, is, in fact, equal to the normal notion of length between them. And again, uh, the triangle inequality was uh, was put in to capture to capture uh, this property that uh, the distance between v and w is less than or equal to the distance between v and let's say y uh, plus the distance between y and w. So if you have a third complex number up here, uh, then the uh, length of the two sides added together is less than uh, well is greater than or equal to the uh, length of the third side. Okay, so that was just complex numbers on the complex numbers. So unitary space unitary space is the uh, a similar metric structure to here uh, but put on the um, on the set c to the power of n so n tuples of complex numbers so c to the power of n is the set containing uh, let's say a1 a2 all the way up to a n where the ai's are all elements of the complex numbers so it's the set containing every possible n tuple of complex numbers, uh, and the way, what we're going to do that is just a set at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to put a metric on it, and once we've got a metric on it, uh, that concept is now known as unitary space. Okay, uh, so the metric function that we ascribe the distance between let's say x and y, uh, where x is, is as I say a, a n tuple of complex numbers. So x1, x2 through xn, and y is also an n tuple of complex numbers, y1, y2, all the way up to yn. Uh, then the distance between those two complex numbers is going to be defined to be equal to uh, the square root. It's going to be completely analogous to the real case, uh, but we can't just put... Uh, in the real case, we had... Have I still got where we had the real case? Yes, I have. Uh, in the real case, uh, we put... Uh, just yi minus xi squared. Now, if you put yi minus xi, we're going to get another complex number. When we square it, that is just going to go to another complex number. Uh, so we'd be adding up complex numbers. So we're going to have to make some alteration to make sure that we get real numbers because the distance function must describe a real number uh, to this uh, the distance between the two points. Uh, so instead, what we do is we take uh, y1 minus x1 we take the modulus of it and we square that. Uh, and then we take the modulus of y2 minus x2, uh, x2, sorry, we square that and we add it on. And we go all the way up to uh, yn minus xn and we square that one's modulus too. So we add up all the moduli squared, uh, we, t uh, we add them all up and then we square root it. Uh, so we could rewrite this as the square root of the summation i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of yi minus xi uh, squared. Okay, uh, so uh, again, as I say, we're not going to be able to, we're not going to show that this obeys the triangle inequality in this video. We will, in later videos, prove that this obeys the triangle inequality, so we'll come back. Uh, so at the moment, we're just going to uh, look at the first three axioms of the, of the um, uh, metric space, and uh, we know, of course, that for the case uh, n is equal to 1, uh, that this uh, that this metric formula here, if you put in n is equal to 1, you just get uh, y1 minus x1 squared. If you square root that, it just goes to the modulus of y1 minus x1. Uh, therefore, it reduces down to the case of just the complex plane, and we know that that uh, obeys the triangle inequality from intuition. Uh, so, uh, that hopefully uh, will do for you at the moment as a reason uh, why this is going to obey the triangle in the property. There's some sort of intuition that as some sort of inkling that this formula might just obey the triangle inequality, but later, as they say, we will prove it. Okay, uh, so uh, we, let's, uh, let's check that it obeys the first uh, three axioms then. That the distance between x and y 
is an element of the non-negative real numbers. Well, each modulus is an element of the non-negative real numbers. When you square it, it will still be an element of the non-negative real numbers. When you add them all together, it will still be an element of the non-negative real numbers. When you square root an element of the non-negative real numbers, you still get an element of the non-negative real numbers. And it will always be finite as well. Uh, providing, of course, that these co are complex numbers, that these all these entries are complex numbers and not some infinite complex number. So we want them all to be finite complex numbers. And of course, if you've got infinity in there, it's not a complex number anyway. Uh, it's not an element of this set C. Okay, so it is going to be a non-negative real number. Two, that the distance between x and x is equal to zero. Okay, so if I put in uh, y is equal to x1, x2, all the way up to xn, all of these sums are going to go, are going to be, so the distance between x and x is going to equal the square root of the summation, i is equal to one, let me just get this nice and in view, i is equal to one to n, of the modulus of xi minus xi squared. Well, xi minus xi is the complex number zero. The complex number zero has modulus zero. Zero squared is zero. If you sum up n lots of zero, you still get zero. If you square root zero, you still get zero. So the distance is zero. Conversely, if you have the distance of xy is equal to zero, then that implies that at the square root obviously is equal to zero. If something square root is equal to zero, it implies that the thing that you are square rooting was equal to zero. So we get that the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the modulus of of the modulus of yi minus xi squared is equal to zero. We are summing up a bunch of non-negative real, uh, real numbers and getting zero. So the only way you can do that is if all of them are equal to zero. So yi minus xi squared must equal zero. Uh, that implies that yi minus xi is equal to zero, uh, because the only number which squares to give zero is zero, which implies that yi is equal to xi for all i is equal to 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. Okay, uh, so there we go, that's that one shown. Uh, the third property is that uh, symmetry, the distance between x and y uh, is equal, as I say, to the square root of the sum, i is equal to 1 to n, of the modulus of yi minus xi squared. Now, as always, uh, this does not map. This modulus sign does not care uh, whether we do yi minus xi or xi minus yi. Uh, the modulus of it is the same thing. So we get this, that this is equal to the square root of the sum from i is equal to one to n of xi minus yi squared, uh, which is then equal to the distance between uh, y and x. Okay, uh, so uh, we get that it does obey the symmetry properties. Symmetric. So four, it, I'm just going to wave my hands at this at the moment. I promise you, I promise you that someone very clever, Minkowski, no less, um, did, did do all of this. He did show that this is a, uh, that this does obey the triangle inequality. And we will see that this, um, so the distance between x and y is indeed less than the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and y, where x, y, and z are all elements of these n tuple of this set of n tuples of complex numbers. So, uh, so it does obey the axioms of a metric space. So C n, along with this metric, is known as unitary n space. Unitary n space. So I want to just. Um, just notational issue here. Cn, the set Cn, is not a unitary space. That is just a set of n tuples of complex numbers. With the metrical structure, with this specific metric structure, it is called unitary n space. There are lots of other metrical structures that you can put on Cn, and they are not unitary n space. So understand the difference between the uh, the metric space and the actual just the set that it's defined on.